Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Oh, it's interesting that uh, they follow that they ended it with that song because. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm just taking after Rick. <laughs> Oh, no, but I've been struggling with a couple of different messages, and uh, today's message kind of directed me. The pastor was talking about how we need to be more focused, and I, for the last two days, I've had one word in my mind, which makes sense because of the time of year we're in, you know. New Year's resolutions, resolution was the word in my head. I kept hearing this word over and over again. Resolution, resolution. So I, I'm, I'm like, okay, now I, I've got to look this word up. Why is it ringing in my head so bad? Because it's, I know it's not, you know, just there. Resolution, for those of you that are not really concerned about, about New Year's, about New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. You know, it's something that we do. We make a, a re, we resolve to, you know, go on a diet or be better to who we are, you know, to, to those around us. But the pastor brought up a good point, and that is we forget about God. The number one thing that we should be resolved about is walking closer with God. You know, we need to uh, focus on what his path is, not what the world's path is. Uh, in, <clears throat> excuse me, in Proverbs, it says in, in chapter 3, verse, starting with verse 3, it says, let, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them with the, about thy neck, write them up upon the tablet of thy heart, so shall they find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. So, we're on a path. We all know we're on a path. We're, we're headed from point A to point B. Sometimes it's B, C, D, E, F. But we need to focus on where we are. We need to focus on who we are. Are we of this world? Or are we a child of the Most High? You know, the Bible says that we are a peculiar people. And we, we tend to say things like that, you know, oh, we're, we're blessed, we're, th we're this, we're that, but are we really? Do we really know what that means? Do we really understand that by putting, pouring ourselves into his word, by praying and being with him, fellowshipping with God, that he will guide us, he will show us where we're headed, what we need to do. Um, it, it says that uh, we'll find favor in God. Now, what, that, what does that mean? Does that mean that we're going to get everything we want? No, not necessarily. You know, I mean, I'd like to be a millionaire, but maybe God can't trust me with that million right now. Just be honest. You know, I mean, I, it is what it is. But if I continue to abide in him and I continue to put his word in me, then I know eventually what he wants and what I want will line up. They'll be the same. You know, it, and it's the same for all of us. You know, you might want a car. You might want this. You might want that. But the thing is, God knows what you need. And God knows what you can handle. You know, and uh, the thing is, do we take advantage of what we get, what we're given? 
do we t do we use it to further the kingdom or further ourselves? You know, if I had that million dollars, yeah, I, I, I'm sure in my head I might say, oh well, I, you know, I'd, I'd feed the homeless or you know, like we were talking earlier, maybe we, you know, build it, build a place where they could get, you know, shelter. But in my heart, I would also be like, okay, well, I want this and this and that and that and you know. I want to have fun. Eventually, I'm believing that what I consider fun and what God expects of me will be the same. So, you know, we, uh, we talk about, like I said, you know, oh, we're blessed. We're a peculiar people. You know, if we were truly a peculiar people, we wouldn't have to say things like that. The world would see that in us and say, wait a minute, what is going on with you? There's something there. There's something that you've got. There's something that I'm missing here. You know, and by, by living a life for God, by allowing him to guide us to be the light unto our feet, unto our path, you know, we will honor him in what we do. And that is what he rejoices in. In a, later on in Proverbs, it, uh, chapter 15, verse 9, it says, God despises the way of the wicked or the way of the world. The world is wicked, inherently wicked. We're born into sin. But he loves those that pursue happiness or pursue righteousness. What does that mean? That pursue him. If we pursue God, he finds the joy immensely. And we, by glorifying God, by honoring God, and by being his child and showing his love to others, we're, we're, we're letting God live in our lives. We're letting God live through our lives. And we're letting other people realize there's a better way. That there is hope in a world where hope is a four-letter word. You know, no pun intended. But, you know, we, when we talk about hope, when we talk about care or feelings, either the world tunes us out or says you're dreaming. But if we show them caring, we show them hope, we show them love, then they can't say anything about it. They can't mock us because it's not us. It's God through us. And that, that in itself is the joy and the resolution that we need to have. We need to be resolute, committed, uh, what are some of the other words that, that resolute mean? You know, uh, on a path, set on a path. You know, we need to be that light. We need to let his light shine through us. In, in the process of trying to, to understand the message where, you know, where it says to be that you know it'll be a lamp to our feet, a light to our our path. To understand that a lamp is nothing more than what the light is in. So if we spend enough time in the word, we become that lamp. That lamp which the light will show us where to go. Now, and I just pray that that is where we go. That is my resolution for the year, is to walk closer to God, to try and forget those, that, those things that I had left behind that I keep digging up, like the pastor said this morning, that, uh, that his walk that he has set for me will be something that glorifies him 
through me. And I just, I thank you, thank you for the opportunity to share that and that opportunity to be sharing my light. Thank you. I'm feeding right off of that one. Amen. I got a little something short and sweet for you tonight, but before I say that, it's been on my heart, it's been weighing on my heart real awful heavy lately, especially in the last couple of days, about how much the world needs us. So he's right on target. I can just flow right in that now. Because let me tell you right now, they don't know that they need us, but they do. They do. And it's not us that they need, but it's Jesus in us, brothers and sisters. That's what they need. Amen. So let me tell you right now, if you're not letting that light shine, this world is headed for chaos. If you think it's in there now, you wait until you let down Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw my all men nigh unto me. Amen. Does anybody still believe that in this place? Hallelujah to God. I want you to know that without us, they would be destroyed. That this world would be in utter chaos. Amen. As soon as the God starts move, stops moving in this place and stops moving in the world we live in, the world won't know what to do with themselves. Amen. It's the love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what's keeping us together. That's what's holding this thing together. God himself, he's the mighty God, amen? He's the same God. Hey, yesterday, today, and forever, the Bible says, Jesus Christ is the same, amen? He has not let me down, amen? I want you to know that he's still moving today. He has not let this world go, amen? Some people think that this thing's too far gone, but I'm here to tell you right now that my God still holds this thing in his hand. Hallelujah. I can rejoice in knowing that right now, amen? My God's still in control, Sister Lubell. Amen? I don't serve a dead God. Amen? God is not waiting on to see whether or not I'm going to get the mission accomplished. Amen? He's already accomplished the mission. Amen? That's why I stand here today. Because he said it's finished, brother. Amen? I stand here because of him. I don't stand here. and God's not going to accomplish something whether I don't do it or not. You think it hinges on whether I'm doing it or not? If I don't do it, God will raise another one up, brother Rick. Amen? The Spirit of God is going to get the job done. It ain't going to be me, honey. I want him running through me. How many wants the Lord running through you tonight? Hey, Amen. I got a little word for you here I prepared that the Lord give me. Real short and sweet. Hopefully I can get, it, get through it here in the next 12 minutes. But hopefully it will teach you just a little bit of resilience. Amen. Because we need to be resilient. And let me say this before I get started. The, the world needs us. Let's get back to that. Just for one more minute. I want you to know the world needs us, which is really scary. It's scary. Because when I start thinking about who I am, I'm nothing, Rick. I'm nothing. And if they need me, then God help us. Amen? If they, I need Jesus. Amen? That's what I'm getting at. I still need him. He saved me, but I still need him. Amen? Because if they need me, then they're going to be in a mess, honey, if I ain't got him. Adam needed him in the garden, honey. The judges needed him. When they were in distress, they called upon the Lord and he heard their cry, the Bible said. The judges needed him. The prophets needed him. Jeremiah was thrown in a dirty dungeon. And you, a lot of people thought he had it together. But honey, when he was sitting in the bottom of that dungeon, he was all but gave up. He was just like any of the rest of us. He was all but gave up. He was all but wondering if it was worth even being born or not. But God looked at him and said, Call upon my name, amen, and I'll show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. How many still believe that God will show you tonight? The only thing you got to do is want it tonight. God is still very much alive, amen. He is yesterday, today, and forever. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is no end to the God I serve. After I'm gone, I told him this morning, I said, God is here. Daniel is not here. God is here. He is the one that will be here, Brother Rick. I will be dead and gone. And Jesus looked at him and he told him, he said, Abraham, your father is dead, amen. He said, Moses, the one that gave you the law, he's dead. He said, but before Abraham was, I am. That's what he said. Glory to God. And I, I'm glad to say, I'm glad to stand here and be able to say that the God that my grandparents served, their, 
laying in the grave right now. Their bodies, their physical bodies that the Lord gave them are in the ground. But their spirits are very much alive in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. Amen. And I'm glad that I can stand here and say that long after I'm dead and gone, God will still be at work, honey. God is not hinged upon me. God is not operating upon me. Amen. I am just one little simple vessel that God pours out of. And that should be each and every one of our desires. Is that God continues to pour out of us. Amen. Day by day. I'm renewed by his spirit. Glory to God. Lord don't stop pouring your spirit in me. God is my humble prayer. Don't stop pouring your spirit in them God. Because if you do we're headed for chaos. Glory to God. Let me give you a little resilience here. Then I'm going to shut up. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try to give you as much as Jesus in, in about 10 minutes as I possibly can to, using two words. I really enjoyed this. So i got to give it to you before I sit down. Two words. Though and yet. Amen? I've done said enough to shut up now, but two words. Though and yet. So look for these words. Powerful word right here, y'all. All scripture. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you... I want you to know you might seem little tonight, amen, but you are big in God's eyes, amen. Great things can come out of you, amen. Yet out of you shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old and from everlasting. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Does this sound easy? Does this sound familiar to somebody tonight? For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Let this give you some strength tonight, y'all. Let this be your hope, amen, because Jesus Christ is our hope. Though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed him not. They sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. Still doing it today, right? But guess what? They found none. Yet, though many false witnesses came, yet they found none. Glory to God. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet they desired Pilate that he should be slain. But in Jesus' spirit, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Hallelujah to God. Thank God for the resilience of our Lord today. Because it had not been for him, I wouldn't have the resilience that I have today. Thank God I stand by his word, Brother Rick. Though he slain me yet, well, I trust him. But the story doesn't end there, y'all. For though he was crucified through weakness in the eyes of man, yet he lives by the power of God. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah to God, I feel the Lord. And because he lives, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Glory to God, for the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he said, if you turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were some of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence, the Lord said. Amen? How many knows you can't outreach the love of God? Glory to God. I can never go too far or too wide for my Lord and Savior where he can't reach down and save me, Brother Rick. He did it once. He can do it again if he has to. Glory to God. Hey, he said, those that have lost the faith have made shipwreck. That's what Paul said. But glory be to God, I got the one that fixes it when I hit an iceberg. The Titanic hit an iceberg and it went down. But I'm telling you something right now. I serve a God that when I hit a devil in the middle of the water, it might put a hole in my ship, but he'll patch it for me. Glory to God. I'm going to heaven, glory to God. I'll glorify the Lord if I have to for the last six minutes and just bless his holy name. Thank God I'm on my way to heaven tonight. Glory to God, I got the master of the ship in the boat with me. Glory to God, he made the gospel ship. If he made the ship, then he can fix it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Though the Lord be high, yet he has respect unto the lowly. For which one of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. 
And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give you. I say unto you, says Jesus Christ, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Glory to God. I'm going to go home about four or five loaves of bread. Glory. Glory to God. I'm one of them ones that walk up in that spiritual grocery store and don't save no bread for the rest of them, honey, because I need him. I'm going to take all I can get. If you want to pass up your loaf, I'm going to be like this sister, and I'm going to say, I'm not giving up mine. I want the whole box of candies. Lord, that's still stuck with me. Lord, anointed that message, honey. We need to get the whole box of candies. You're so right. Hallelujah to God. Yes, though your beginning was small, hear me, child of God. Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end should greatly increase. For surely I believe, though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God and which fear before him. How many believe that in this house? For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. I know he's on the throne today, church. And though, Job said, after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Hallelujah, I rejoice because I know I serve the one who lives today. And because he lives, I can live. Thank you, Jesus. I live today. Honey, I don't wait till eternal life. I don't wait till heaven. I'll be able to say, Jesus Christ said, this is life eternal, that they know you the only true God and his son, Jesus Christ. I thank God that I know what true life is all about. Honey, it's about knowing God the Father. It's about knowing God the Son. But it's not just going to stop there, honey, but it's about knowing the God in the here and now. And that's in the Holy Ghost, God. He is a baptizer with fire. And I thank God that he's lit a fire in me, Brother Rick, because Lord knows where I'd be if he'd left me out there. But he lit me up, amen. He lit me up. He said, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Honey, if that ain't true, I don't know what is. He's in my life, honey. And because he's in my life, he's lit me up, brother. He's lit me up not only so I can see, but so others around me can see. So they can see that God still lives. Amen. He hasn't forsaken us, Lord. Too many years have gone by and they wonder if he's still real. Is he coming back? I'm here to reassure you, honey, that as he has said it, so shall it be. Glory to God. I'm about to knock this pulpit over. Whom having not seen, I'm going to shut up now. Whom having not seen, you love. The God that we serve. The God that we will see in our flesh. Whom in having not seen, you love. You love him, don't you? In whom though now you see him not yet believing. You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Can somebody give God some praise up in this house tonight? Thank you, Lord God. We glorify you in this place, God. Lord, we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, God. We receive the end of our faith. It's been paid for in full, God. I receive it tonight, God. And Lord, I glorify you tonight, Lord. I rejoice before your presence, God. Lord, the heavens are open and the angels declare the glory of God. And Lord, I'm just joining in with them tonight. Glory be to God. He is mighty. Glory to God. Somebody give him some praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the anointing, honey. Thank Him for the Word. Without the Word, where would we be, church? Though the world appears to be falling away, I'll give you one of my own. Though the the world appears to be falling apart, yet my Master lives. Glory to God. Though the ship may be broken, yet I'll make it to the seashore. Glory to God. Because I serve the God that is holding me together, honey. He made me, Brother Rick, and if he made me, then he sure well can hold me together. He's the glue that holds the broken pieces, honey. Give it to him tonight, and he'll fix everything. Somebody glorify God. This next one's coming.
Can the church say praise the Lord? Can the church say praise the Lord? I got a question for you. How many of you can walk on water? Come on, how many of you can walk on water? Huh? Peter did. What makes you any different than Peter? Huh? But one thing Peter did, Peter failed. You say, well, sister, he failed. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. How do I know he did? Because he started sinking. Why did he start sinking? Because he took his eyes off of the Lord. He took his eyes off of the Lord. Whenever he did that, what was, what was the problem there? You ask. He lost faith, Brother Thomas. He lost the faith. And what is faith? Faith is part of the shield of God, is it not? It's part of the shield. And if you don't have the whole armor, you need to mind to have any of it. And when Peter was walking out there and he was doing his thing, he was really, I bet he was just really full of himself, don't you? But boy, when he got big-headed, how many Christians get big-headed and they lose their way? How many Christians get out there and they think they got it all and they ain't got nothing because they done come into their self? Well, Peter, he lost his way and he started sinking. That's the way us Christians are. We get out there, <clears throat> I'm better than that and I'm better than you. But let me tell you something. Each one of us will have our own place in the kingdom of God if we don't lose our faith. Now we can get out here and say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to go out and do some visitation. I'm going to do a food pantry. I'm going to go to the hospitals. I'm going to go do this. But without faith, you can't do it. And without the full armor of God, you can't do it. Can the church say praise the Lord? You can't do it. You say, what is the full armor? Huh, what is that full armor? If you look in the Ephesians and you look down in there and you start reading down in there, that's some good stuff. It, and verse, verse 14, the truth. How many of us can face the truth? How many of us can face the truth? When Peter was walking out on that water and he lost his faith, he lost the truth. He lost it, even though he went back. And how many of us are too ashamed, too big-headed, that we can't go back to this holy altar, this holy altar, and pick that truth up again? How many of us? Righteousness is the next. You say, well, sister, what is righteousness? Service to the king. Service to the king. Without righteousness, you cannot be holy. Without righteousness, you cannot serve him. And without righteousness, you can't be part of the truth. You get me? You can't be part of the truth. And then what do you have? You have peace. You have peace. How many of us have seen newborn Christians Whenever they first get saved, what happens? Or new ordained ministers, what happens? Whenever they get up there, they're really on fire, brother. They're really on fire. But they start getting in the worldly stuff. They start sinking down in that water that Peter was in, that murky water. They lose sight of what it means to serve the Lord. Righteousness, peace, and here's the big word, faith. The big word, faith. You can't have nothing without the faith of the Lord. You know, you can't have nothing if you don't have faith that whenever you die, that your spirit is going to leave that dead body and go into heaven. You're not going to 
be nothing. You can't be. You can't be. Do you think that your spirit's going to stay in that dead body? It's not. It's not. It's not going to stay down there because the spirit can't live in what? Something that's dead. It can't live in something that's dead. So if you're a dead Christian, uh-oh. If you're a dead Christian and you sit on a pew, you can't raise your hand, you can't take and praise the Lord, you're dead. You don't have anything. Or you're so into yourself that you don't have the faith to pull you through. How many of you can walk out in that water without sinking? That water represents this world. It represents what we're going to be walking into daily. And without that faith that we can walk through it, we don't need wading boots. We don't need an umbrella. We don't need something to protect us of the water because the water is in us, the living water. The living water is in us. And we have to have that faith. Salvation. Salvation. How many people think that one time at the altar is enough? How many people think that they don't sin daily? If you think so, you're wrong. There's not one of us in here perfect. There's not one of us in here that doesn't sin daily. There's not one of us that walks and starts to sink daily. We should every time and every chance that we get pray for our salvation. It could easily be taken away. I could easily not be standing up here today. I was in that car wreck. I could have easily been taken out of this world, but the Lord had better plans for me. He had better plans for me. Salvation. Salvation is something to hold on to, to cherish. To cherish. Now the spirit. What kind of spirit are you holding? What kind of spirit are you carrying around with you? Are you letting other Christians see the true self in you? Or are you just putting part of it? Are you, not, are you so afraid to show somebody what the true meaning of the Lord is? The true meaning of the Lord is joy. Joy. If you can't have joy in the spirit. God didn't bring a bunch of grumpy old people, men and women. He didn't do that. We're to have joy in his word. We're to have joy in his works. And he didn't have a bunch of lazy people either. If you're sitting on a pew and you're not working for the Lord, you're failing. You're as bad as Peter was when he stepped out of that ship and he started walking. That's what most of us do when we are newborn Christians. We start walking in the faith. But then somebody will come up and say, hey, you're not doing it right. Or, hey, you're too loud. And we start losing our faith. What would have happened if when Mary was carrying the baby Jesus that she lost her faith? Ever think about that? What would have happened if she would have lost the faith? Huh? You've got to have that faith. And with that faith comes the spirit. you got to have that spirit. People that, I, I've told Thomas before, Brother Thomas, I don't know how people sit in the pews and not praise the Lord. I just can't do it myself. I never have been able to do it. And I never will. I don't want to be one of those Christians that sit down and not raise my hand to praise the Lord or for giving him praise. I don't care what Tom, Dick, or Harry thinks of me. The only one I think of that I want to be proud of me and says good and faithful service is God when I pass from his life into the next. That's all that's 
important to me. That's all. But without the Spirit of God, I can't make that way. Without that, I can't. There's more than likely somebody sitting in here thinking I'm just a crazy old woman, which I am, but that's beside the point. The Spirit lives in me. Lives in me. When I pass from this life to the next, this Spirit's not going to stay in this dead body. It's going to go over to the other side. And now what's going to happen when I get there depends on me and my faith. Depends on me and my spirit. Depends on how much I serve the Lord here. I could easily, easily just sit down and go about my business. But I want him to say good and faithful service. You hear what I'm saying? Good and faithful service. The service that I do unto the Lord, I want him to be proud of what I'm doing. I want him to say, you took the armor, you used the armor, you used the truth, you used the righteousness, you used the peace, you used the faith, you used the salvation, and you used the spirit. And let me tell you something. If you've got one piece missing, you're going to sink. You're going to sink. Always did tell when Bill was alive and there would be new people that would accept Jesus Christ or Savior, get baptized as quickly as possible. Don't wait around on it. Don't wait around on it. And the reason I tell them that because you're giving the devil room to come in. You're giving him room to come in there and chip away at your, at your armor. See, that's what happened to old Peter there. He got his armor chipped away at. When he started to sink in that water, his face went. He didn't believe he could walk on the water no more. He got scared. He didn't believe it. So he started to sink in that dirty, deep water. You know, us as a lot of Christians, we do that too. We start sinking in that dirty, stinky, sin-filled earth. But whenever you put your eyes upon the Lord and you start walking that straight and narrow, what's going to happen? You're going to grow. You're going to grow. And if you're not growing with the Lord, you're not moving with the Lord. If you're not growing with the Lord, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. If you say, well, I've done this for 20 years, then something's wrong with you. You've got to do what the Lord would have you do. You've got to do it, and you've got to keep growing. You can't sit still. I hope you got something out of this. That's what the Lord gave me. So whoever's next, come up. But can the church say praise the Lord? Keep your eyes on him. So I knew about popcorn preaching before we went to Texas for Christmas and uh, didn't know if he'd asked me to, to speak or not, and that was okay, whichever he decided, he's the man of the house, and, but I prayed God give me something to say. How many times have you prayed to the Lord and he's silent, right? That's what, that's part of what I'm going to speak on, so I prayed that before. You can probably turn this down because I'm ringing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I prayed and I asked the Lord, God, give me what you have for me. And we went to Texas and uh, I was asked to sing. 
God, what do you have me sing? I don't ever want to be the one seen. Hide me behind the cross. I want y'all to see Jesus. I don't want you to see me or hear me. I want you to hear the Lord. I want you to see him. And so as I was there, the Lord said, sing these songs. And so the songs I sang were, um, Your Cries Have Awoken the Master, and a song titled Just Stand, and Sheltered in the Arms of God. And all that came from November of my life. All that came from, I was sick. Um, they tested me. I did test positive for COVID. I don't know if it was really COVID because I didn't have the typical symptoms, but who knows with this world and COVID, who, who knows what the typical symptoms are, right? Um, and it started when Kate was feeling bad. She didn't have any symptoms or any fever or anything, but she was just whiny and complaining and crying and you know, I would pray and I would say, God, why is she feeling this way? I don't understand. And then I got sick. Sorry. And then I got sick and I was praying. First of all, I take every sickness before my children. If you're a mom, you understand. I don't want my child to be sick ever. I'll take it on me. So I was praying and I was thinking, God, do you even really hear me? God, do you even really care? Right? Right? Let me tell you that he does. Let's go real quick before I get sidetracked. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 says, On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let's cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat and as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves be beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Or another book says, Where is your faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? He cares. So they were going across the sea. It's a journey that they had taken before. They're familiar with it. They're fishermen. They'd been on this sea time and time again, right? Jesus was with them. And so they were what? At the time, they were comfortable. How many times do we get comfortable in our walk with the Lord, right? We get comfortable... Because it's something that we have done. I told people in Sunday school this morning, I was raised in church. I, I'm comfortable in church. But we can't get comfortable in the work of the Lord. Amen. Sister Lulabel just said, we can't get comfortable and just sit for 20 years doing the same thing. We can't get comfortable yeah. in the Lord. That's what they were. They were comfortable. Jesus, how many of you remember that he's 100% man at this time as well, right? He was tired. He had just finished ministering, and he said, let's cross to the other side. So he was tired, and he went to sleep. The fishermen, the disciples, they were there. They started crossing, and what happened? Nothing that's strange. A storm came. Because of the location of this sea, storms come all the time. I'm sure they would have encountered a storm before. So what was different about this time? Because Jesus was with them. So I've encountered storms in my life before. What was different about this one? I think what was different about this storm and what's different about storms that you may be going through is exactly what Daniel and Vernon have said. The world needs us. The world doesn't need us. The world needs Jesus, as he pointed out to you. But who's going to show them Jesus? Who's going to show the world Jesus? His disciples, right? Right? Those who are called by his name. So why is this any different? Because Satan desires to take you out. Satan desires to sift us as wheat, right? He desires to take us out. He doesn't want the word of God going forward. He doesn't want the church getting bigger. He doesn't want the church growing, right? He wants to take us out. So at this time, the disciples are saying they knew who Christ was. They'd been with him preaching or teaching when he was teaching. They witnessed him doing miracles. In fact, 
just but not too long before that, he had healed Peter and law's mother, Peter's mother-in-law. He, he knew, they knew who Jesus was. They knew what he could do. I know who Jesus is. I know what he can do. I know that he walks with me and talks with me. But I was in a storm. I had been comfortable in my faith. I had been comfortable in my walk with the Lord. And now a storm came. And what did I think? God, where are you? Did the disciples? I know that the disciples had encountered this storm before. They'd been on this sea. They'd crossed this before. They were fishermen. They'd been in storms before. Why were they so fearful in this one? It's because Jesus was with them, and they thought they'd rely on him, and they thought that he had forsaken them. Master, do you not care that we perish? Jesus, do you not hear me? God, do you not even care that I'm suffering? God, do you not even care that I'm going through this trial? He cares. There are even ministers of the gospel who now say, uh, Pastor Hollifield told us this morning that he got a text that it's not a happy new year for this man because he's struggling. He's a minister of the gospel, preaching the word, and he can't say that it's a happy new year because he's struggling with trials in his life. Is that where you are today, that you can't say Happy New Year? That you can't rejoice with Brother Daniel and Brother Vernon and Sister Lulabelle when they preach because you're going through a storm? If you know Jesus as your Savior, He's with you. He cares. He hasn't left you. He's not going to forsake you. He hears you. He may not answer right away, right? He may not answer immediately to calm the winds and the seas. In this instance, he woke up when they woke him up, and he said, peace be still, and he called. But then what did he say to them? Where is your faith? Did you not think I could get you through this storm? Did you not think that you'll survive this storm just like you did the last storm? Did you not think that I can keep you safe and carry you through this storm just like I did the last one? These are things that God said to me, and we're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, and my testimony might help you, and your testimony is going to help someone else. So what I'm saying is if you're struggling in a storm, it doesn't matter if you've been with the Lord for five, min five minutes, five years, it doesn't matter. He's with you. He hears you. And he knows. Right? So, just a couple of words real quick. Of the song, it says, It hit you without any warning. The storm of your life had begun. Seeing no hope in the distance, you're frightened and nowhere to run. By now, your vessel is filling and you're thinking that you'll surely drown. You've cried out for help from the Savior, and you know you can't give up now because you've prayed all night, because you've held on with all of your might. Child, your cries have awoken the Master. He hears you. He cares. The world does need us. The world needs the Savior. And that's why we feel these turmoils. I think this is why I feel it so much more is because Satan is desiring to take you out. He doesn't want you to go minister the gospel. He doesn't want you to tell your neighbor, your coworker, your family member about Jesus and the goodness of God. What he wants you to tell them, what Satan wants you to tell them, is God left me out there to drown. God doesn't leave you to drown. He hears you. He's there. Um, and one thing that Brother Daniel was saying, and I wrote it down here, is that he did miracles among them, yet they believed him not. So when we're struggling, have we seen God do miracles in our life? Think about it. If you haven't, seek him. Seek him daily. Seek him more. I've seen God do miracles in my life, so why can I not believe him? 
Why do I not believe that this time when I ask, he's still going to be the same? I know God is God, and he doesn't ever change the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he's done it before, he's going to do it again. One last song. The Lord speaks to me a lot through songs and gives me songs. Y'all know I'm a singer, and I love it. So one last song, the words of this. And I thought Daniel was going to quote it when he was up here just a minute ago. But it says, the anchor holds, though the ship is battered. The anchor holds, though the sails are torn. I've fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas, but the anchor holds in spite of the storm. So who's your anchor tonight? If your anchor is Jesus Christ and he's in your boat with you, then he hears you and he cares. He'll calm the sea. It may not be on your time schedule. You may have to endure the trial. You may have to go through some things because, again, your testimony helps others, right? What you've been through can help others pull through. You can help them get through. So you may not hear an answer right away. God's sending it because God cares. He cares for you. He hears your prayer. I was thinking this, too, as Daniel was up here, that there may be some of you here tonight that you're thinking, yeah, I'm glad he's excited, and I'm glad that he's talking about all this great stuff, but I don't think God hears me. Vernon's up here talking, and he's talking about the goodness of the Lord, and he's talking about the good things. Yeah, but I'm not sure God hears me. Sister Lulabelle talking about the armor of God and putting it on, and yeah, but I struggle to put it on. I don't know that God cares for me. Friend, I've been there. God cares for you. This can be a happy new year. This can be every day joyful, every day exciting, excited that Jesus is coming again and that he lives in us because he cares for you. He cares for you. I come from one reason tonight. I was saved, and I can't say this right, February of 1979. I knelt in the blood field, and chains were broke <laughs> that I made. The boogeyman didn't make them and put them on me. I made them myself. Oh, but Jesus didn't take a minute to say, is that something you've done to yourself? No. The blood <laughs> set me free. And he's been pouring in me since 1979 and, and before. Uh-oh. Because I had a godly mama. I had a Christian mama. And she prayed for me. And the only reason I come tonight is to do some spilling. Amen? Amen? He been pouring in me year after year, day after day, moment after moment, glory to God. It's got to be a point where it starts spilling over and gives on somebody. Yes. Woo! Yes. Praise God. The demon said, Paul, I know. 
Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who is you? I think we got a whole lot of who is you going on in the church. Amen? You want to feed the homeless? Well, they're just sorry and sitting on their butts not doing nothing. It don't make their belly growl any less. It don't make them less cold for your little pea brain to judge them. I'm a prophet, baby. I'm not a patty cake. I am not. I'm not a bishop. A friend of mine called me. Is this Bishop Rick Cameron? I said, Lord Jesus, no, I don't desire it. <laughs> Amen. I said, I'm a prophet. I ain't no bishop. If any man, the Bible said, if any man desires the office of a bishop, that ain't, Daniel, that ain't even in the fivefold. I didn't draw that baby. Jesus did. I'm excited tonight. Dear God, I'm glad I'm excited tonight, Lord. Who blessed Jesus, amen? I enjoy this existence as much as I can. Now, thanks to not headed people, I do reach a point sometime where I don't really care about being here because I know in whom I have believed. And I know he has called my name. I know my name is written down with his blood in the Lamb's book of life, glory. Woo! Hollywood can't touch that. Amen? My, 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 my. 15th chapter of Romans. First Romans. Somebody might call it. Anyway, 15th chapter Romans. Amen. You start. Wait a minute. Let me make sure. I'm trying. Well, I'm kind of trying. So enjoy it, all the word that has come tonight. 15th chapter Romans. First verse. I'm going to read two verses. Now, if I was really going to preach, I'd read off. I'd read the first three. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please our sin. I'm about to fly away, oh glory, by myself. <laughs> Let every one of us please his neighbor. Please his neighbor for his, his neighbor's good to edification. Father, move feeble, faltering flesh. Meta nano moleo kashrena mukundo. Uleya na mama hasa pakata. Oh God, every heart, now and forever. Amen. I said that halfway jokingly about if I was going to really preach, I'd read all three verses. Let's go be honest with y'all. I told y'all come to spill tonight. I hate this word. Okay. Phew. You know something? I have been filled with the Holy Ghost 
speaking in other tongues, God showing me visions, sitting in sweatpants and a wore out old raggedy hoodie on my sofa while you snoozing, I'm foozing. Amen? You don't care what I look like on the outside because he drove me from the inside. He drove me from the inside. I asked him to please. I did. Today I said, Lord, don't let me take out that on those rabbit trails. And he said, well, my, somebody needs something down that trail. <laughs> Amen. It's his. It's him. It ain't about me or what I think about or what I want. What I want. Hey, I like to be in what that big place up in New York City, this Madison Square Garden. Who? I would preach a wall down if I got half a chance. Oh, brother. I ain't being vain or deceitful. God Almighty called me, ordained me, and elected me before I was ever born a woman in this realm. Amen. He ain't changed his mind. Oh, gosh, you can preach. Well, he wasn't kidding when he called me. My goodness. Okay, Lord. You. Most people don't know this one. Because as I prayed, as heaven poured, I seen this one. And as she prays, as she prays, oh, she bears their infirmities. Manda ha shakataba otai. Glory to she bears their infirmities. And the Father said, I am well pleased in this vessel. Go! Go! We that are strong, Vernon. You think you've got your spiritual big boy breeches on? Okay, I'm going to get in trouble for this. Or your big girl breeches on? We're leaving that right there. I ain't going no further. But. If you're strong. If he's your strength. You're not going to people because they believe like you. You're not going to people, according to that scripture, because they look right. Or, oh boy, did you see what they put in the offering plate? Glory. You're not going to them for them. No. You're going to them just like the master came to me. He didn't come to me because I was a prophet. He came to me because I was foul and wretched and blind and naked and going away backwards. And his blood was the only thing that could bring me out. Woo! And you know what? It's still bringing me out. We that are spiritual, if you see a brother overtaken in a fault, you that are spiritual, go to such a one in the spirit of meekness. Doing what? Considering yourself. Considering yourself. Don't get so pompous and full of it. They think you think you are above transgression or shortcoming or sin. The church pray and they namby pamby around. God forgive me for coming short. You didn't come short. You got mad and you willfully sinned. Amen. 
My God, when, when I was young and called to preach, I was a blend somewhere between Billy the Kid and Billy Graham. I, I was. I was a, boy, I rolled in and preached. Draw for the hip, you know? There's just, they just one black guy loved his heart. I, I run metal cutoff saws. And they, you know, other people come back there and do the punch presses. And them pans of parts weigh 3,400 pounds. Well, at that time, you can't tell now, this ain't what I built, but I was in bodybuilding at that time. And I could lift. And he was over there, and boy, he had that music, they call it music. To me, it sounded like his radio was broke. But he was over there, and they were cussing. They're taking all, saying all this junk. Man, my wife would have been down, I would have bust that radio. Amen. Well, you are not that. I thought you were a preacher. Well, that's what you get for drinking. <laughs> Amen. Be a man if you're a man of God. Be a man. If you're a woman of God, be a woman of God. Have virtue, have integrity, stand tall. Don't be bending in the middle, baby. He didn't bend with you. I went over that boy. He had a full pan of parts. He needed to sit down on the floor. I walked over there. And I looked at him, I did. I really looked like a preacher. Daniel, I looked him dead in the eye and I said, my arms are big and bold and everything, you know. And hey, I didn't look like this then. I picked that thing up and I said, don't cuss me, at me, or around me. And I sat down on the floor and I raised it back up and we've been friends ever since. But I learned through the years, if I go with his flow, I don't have to make it flow if I just go with his flow. If he ain't God of all, he ain't God at all. Amen, Rick. Go ahead. I am. I know, I know. Thank you, Pastor. See, Pastor just gave me five more minutes. No. <laughs> so I'm going to enjoy myself. I preached the other Sunday night, and, and Daniel was here. And different ones. But Daniel had never heard me preach. And, and he didn't hear me preach that night. It's the gifts and the calling of God. I don't know nothing. And I went home that night. And I was perplexed. I was like, God, there was more knots on the logs in the house of God. Did I do that lousy of a job? I mean, was I insensitive to the Holy God? It bothers me. These things are me. This is who I am. This is what I've run this race for. This is the legacy I will leave behind me. It matters to me. And I was praying, I was talking to the Father. And I seen the sun setting. And God said, this season is closing for preaching. Not for prophesying. Not for being a prophet. Not for ministering in the spirit. But that's closing. I said, dear God, Lord, I preached most of my life. Hey, probably all my life because I preached before, but that was for the devil. Amen. We, act like we just got gifted when we got saved. Don't be fooled. Before you got here, you were there. Uh-oh. Amen. 
And bless your heart, you got here to fallen parents, no matter how precious they were. Ain't nobody in the world could have a better mama than mine. Daddy? Mm, no. But, but, she was fallen. She needed a savior. They, they teach us a little bit of the best they know how to, to bring us up. The way we should be brought up and do the right thing. And here it is, 2022. I about said it. 2022. And the right thing has fell by the wayside. If you show anything of chivalry or honor, it's ridiculous nowadays. Amen. Amen. Well, my babies, I'll shut up in a minute. I teach young men, stand like a man, act like a man. Don't make people wonder which way it is. Uh-oh. But I've learned to see, I was trained when I came up learning. My papa, his name was Bud Reed. And everybody in Rowan County knows Bud Reed. He's a rough old cob. But they didn't nobody come to my papa's house and mess with me. Picked up on that fast. I didn't get beat when I was at Papa's house. And I was raised to be a man. You don't hurt, you don't say I love you. You oh, you know, I'm a rock. She'll rock. But some of that stayed with me. Through the faith of God, and, and we stop letting God sort our lives at certain points. When in reality, if we would just yield our lives to him, oh, what he would do. Genesis said, God made man. In his image and in his likeness. So if I'm going to be a man, I'm going to act like him. Now, I fail miserably at times, amen? Don't watch me when I'm at Walmart, okay? <laughs> if, if I'm driving at Walmart, leave me alone. <laughs> Jesus will get me through it. And hopefully them too. But... But the older I get, I'm being honest with you, I don't know how. It's not the big struggle when I was young of being sanctified, looking Pentecostal. See, if I was trying to look Pentecostal, I'd have a white shirt on. <laughs> you know, a black top, anyway. I thank God I was saved in the full. God's for holding us, Pentecost. I thank God for that. But I'm not stupid enough to believe that's the end of it. Amen. I'm going to hush with you. Paul spoke of the spirits of just men made perfect. <laughs> I'm going to see him, church. I'm going to see him. And Paul said, for we know that we shall be like him. For we shall see him, Daniel, as he is. No more getting angry. No more scars from yesteryear. No more calluses from growing in the faith. Oh, my God, I will see him as he is. Woo! I'm on my way to that meeting, church, and I'm going to spill all the way there. 